You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Jaden Daniels was at the NFL Combine, spoke to reporters, and uh, he was asked about the possibility of being the number one pick. Here's what Jaden Daniels said. I just want to go to the best situation. If that's the first pick, if that's the 32nd pick, uh, you know, I'm just blessed uh, overall just to be here. And uh, no matter where I hear my name called, I'll be happy. Um, I believe that. I think Jaden is a guy who has never really been too moved by the moment. Um, saw that firsthand uh, when I was there in New York and watched him win the Heisman Trophy. Um, I think every player would love to be the first overall pick. It's one of those things where it's a... Um, it's, of course, a great honor. It's a feather in the cap. It's a distinction you carry forever. But what's interesting is... Since 1936, all the way back in, in the league's history, back to 1936, only 14 number one overall picks are in the Hall of Fame. That's a pretty remarkable number when you think about it. Almost 100 years of history, only 14 number one overall picks have made the Hall of Fame. So it's, it's almost like, Forever and ever and ever, we always talk about the Heisman curse, right? If if you had won the Heisman, you weren't going to go on to have a great career, and it felt like that for a while. I mean, you had guys like Charlie Ward or the late Rashawn Salam, or if it was Danny Warfel. I mean, you know the list, but Gino Toretta. And then by and large, I think a lot of that's gone by the wayside. You've said better players in a different era win the Heisman. A lot of great quarterbacks. Um. You know, the game has evolved, right? The, the college game has started to mirror the NFL game more as opposed to when you had great college quarterbacks whose game maybe didn't translate, Eric Crouch. Um, but the first overall pick thing I think is interesting, and not just the first overall pick, but like the first quarterback taken in the draft isn't always the best quarterback from that draft. Like I went and looked today, and I looked at every draft going back to the year 2000. And I could only count nine times, and I think some of these are actually up for debate, where the best quarterback from that draft was the first quarterback taken in the draft. So, like, for example, a year ago, C.J. Stroud, clearly, and that one-year sample, I get it, but C.J. Stroud looks like he's a better player for now than Bryce Young. In 2022, Brock Purdy has been the best player from that draft, not Kenny Pickett, who was the first quarterback taken. Now in 2021, Trevor Lawrence was the first quarterback taken, and he's been the best quarterback in that draft. It was Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Kyle Trask, Kellen Mond, Davis Mills, Ian Book, Sam Ellinger. Joe Burrow, I think we could have an argument. Burrow, Tua, Justin Herbert, Jordan Love, Jalen Hurts. I mean... Burrow's got an argument, but I don't think it's a slam dunk. Kyler Murray or Daniel Jones in, in the 2018 dra or 2019 draft. Anyway, Trevor Lawrence, I think, Jameis in 15, Cam in 11, Sam Bradford in 10, Matthew Stafford in 9, uh, Carson Palmer in 03. Uh, 08 was Matt Ryan, Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. Still playing. Matt Ryan got to Super Bowl, won an MVP. I don't know. 2004, Eli was the first quarterback taken, but you had Phillip Rivers and Big Ben in that draft. I don't think it's a slam dunk that it's Eli. He won two Super Bowls, but I think all three of those guys are all of famers. So it's a little bit up, up in the air. I don't think, I, you don't have to be the first quarterback taken to have the best career. I mean, it's, it's actually more often that it's not the first quarterback taken that b becomes the best. And all that to say, I actually think, look, I would love to see Jaden Daniels go number one. And to, to some extent, if you're a great player, you make the situation you go to better. Look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow went to the Bengals. They were atrocious. He's made them better when he's been healthy. Um, but I actually think Washington is probably, at two, a better situation. Now, 
when Ron Rivera was there and Dan Snyder's bad owner and all that stuff. And I know Washington hadn't had a lot of success. But with Dan Quinn there now as the head coach, you assume Washington's going to be better on defense. And Jaden's going to have an opportunity to flourish offensively, and he's going to have stability with his head coach. Whereas if Caleb Williams goes number one to Chicago, where Matt Eberflus is the coach, it's likely that after the first year, he's going to have a new head coach and have to learn a new system, new head coach, new everything. Jaden, I think, is going to have some stability in Washington because you've got a defensive-minded head coach who's a first-year coach and is probably going to stick there for a while. So almost like D'Amico Ryans in Houston, defensive-minded head coach, goes there, drafts a franchise quarterback, maybe turns things around. So, of course, I'd love to see Jaden go number one overall. If he goes two to Washington, I don't think that's a terrible situation. and It might actually set him up better for success, in, certainly in the short term, than what Caleb Williams may face in Chicago. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.